Hey guys, welcome to another video from the Parrot Bros. Now today I'm gonna to talk you through all the suspension upgrades that I have done on my V6. Now because it's a DSG, I haven't gone mad track focused. I've kind of wanted to keep it, we'll call it fast road. I wanted to increase the feel. I wanted to take away some of that wallowiness and the fact that the front end is just heavy and wants to go straight when you wanna turn. And, and I feel like I have dialed this into the perfect fast road setup for a 3.2 with DSG. And I'll tell you more straight after the intro. So as you know, when I bought this car, it had the, what did it have on it? It had standard shock absorbers, which I'm guessing are original because they were old, rusty, and actually when I took them off were dead. Um, and it had some Apex 40 mil lowering springs, which were fine. Um, on a shortened shock absorber, they would probably be a lot better the problem is because they were quite low, they were very soft. So they were quite bouncy, which isn't ideal when matched with stock shock absorbers. Now, when I took the stock shock absorbers off, when you compress them, so you push down the strut inside, it should rebound back out again. It did not on any of them, not front or back. All four were absolutely dead. None were leaking, but whether there was no, no uh, material in there left to leak out or they were just, the seals were gone, I don't know, but they were done. Um, so, I mean, just putting on some new shock absorbers and some original springs would have been great, but then the ride height would have been a bit high and it still would have been a bit boaty. But yes, it would have been a hundred times better than what it was. Now, I wanted something a bit more sort of fast road. And what I mean by that is I like to do road trips. I want to be able to feel in the steering. So when I'm turning, I want it to feel precise. I don't want to sort of turn and it feel like it's just got do you know what I mean? A bit of play. I don't like that. Um, I also wanted something a little bit stancier, a little bit lower than standard, but not as low as it was before because it used to touch the floor in places, which I didn't like. And it looked a little, just a little bit too low. And if you go too low, you then affect the performance and the handling. It's, it's all about balance. I mean, it, the, the V6, uh, the V6, the Roadster is really low now, so that's cool. Um, but I wanted to get this absolutely dialed in now obviously it's got the v6 lump in the front so it's heavier um, and i wanted to try and help counterbalance that as well now after doing loads of research and course obviously knowing what i know um, i kind of pushed coilovers to the side because whilst you can get really good ones because of the size of the springs i mean up to maybe 100 mil 90 to 100 mil in diameter they're not going to be great for comfort whereas i know like on the the, the nagaro blue one i've got that has the B12 shocks and spring kit with eye back. Now that's great. However, it sits a little bit high. So then you start delving into different spring options. And the one that comes out on top and I've seen loads of people have on their cars is the H and R set. Now they recommend that they're sort of 25 to 35 mil lower, which sounds perfect. Um, it's a nice drop, a little subtle, not too much. Um, being a later car, it has the slightly lower springs on, so that brings it down just an, a tiny bit more than it would have been originally, which is great. Um, and shock absorbers, I actually looked at H&R do shock absorbers, so I bought them as well. So then that gives it that nice match because the springs and the shocks were made to be together. Perfect, right? So shortened shock absorbers, which will allow better performance with the springs when combined. So that's kind of where I went with that. Now, whilst there, I don't know how well, depending on obviously how well you know TTs and that, the, the lower wishbones or the lower arms have two bushes. One is a uh, round one and one is round and flat. The other one is round as it's sideways. And there's a variant of different bushes in the, the Nagaro blue one. I use the strong flex bushes in the, oh, did I? I use the strong flex and the Defcons. Now, CB Autos make an, a billet aluminium sleeve which slides into the, wishbone at the front and then you put a smaller bush in which allows for less movement so therefore giving you a bit more precise steering and they also do a caster correction bush which goes at the back of the arm i won't go into it too much but it just straightens the system out and it just makes it that little bit nicer on the handling now the bushes aren't particularly cheap to be fair none of this is particularly cheap but it's it makes the car and if you're going to do suspension properly rather than just buying a couple of hundred pound set of coilovers then this is definitely relevant to you. Now, um, I tell you what, let's get driving whilst we're uh, we're talking because I've been enjoying driving this recently. Now I've got all the suspension done. So, come on. 
Oh, it sounds good, doesn't it? So on top of the, um, so I've changed the wishbone bushes to the Defcons and the caster correction bushes. I'll put all the details down in the description of what I've done, should you want to look at uh, purchasing or what I've done and whatever. Um, and then on top of that, I've also used some polybushed top mounts, so just some Powerflex top mount bushes um, on there as well, just to try and negate too much play on the, uh, the top mounts. Whoa. Don't mind if I do. Um, and that is where that finishes with the suspension. Of course, new bolts all the way through, uh, because obviously, well, luckily, because they snap and break and, oh, cattle grid. Oh, they're horrible. Um, and that is kind of it. Now, whilst looking at it, and obviously, I've got the split rims. Now, I love them, and I'm keeping them, so don't, don't try and buy them off me, I'm keeping them. I wanted to look at lighter wheel options, and it just so happened that a set of uh, BBS Anniversary Mark IV golf wheels come up for sale. Now, I know for a fact that they are lightweight, which reduces the unsprung weight. And what that means is, the lighter your wheels and, and brakes and everything that's before the shock absorber, the quicker and the faster your suspension will react um, because it's less weight being pushed about, etc. So basically lighter wheels improves handling uh, and suspension rebound and all that kind of stuff. So it's it, it all tied in and basically I now have different wheels. Now, like I said, I'm gonna keep my splits because I am gonna be using them in the future and they'll probably end up back on this at some point, but I wanted to try lighter wheels, new suspension. And I'm, I'm blown away. It is absolutely lovely. Drive-wise, a little bit bumpy, but not crashy, not uncomfortable, anything like that. You can feel every bit of the road, which is lovely. Um, it does just what you want when you turn in. It's there, it's precise. It does exactly what you want it to do. Um, Money-wise, not including the wheels, I'm probably in for about 900 pound, but it is worth it. Um, a good set of coilovers will set you similar, but you won't have the comfort. And of course, if you're gonna be doing a lot of miles, especially motorway, coilovers aren't always the one for you. If you're gonna be doing a lot of track days, then yes, of course, the coilovers are the one for you, but, I am not. I want to be doing as many road miles as I can. I want to be going to meets. So I want to be doing road trips. Track days are all good fun, but they're expensive. I'd rather get out and see the country like today. Um, so I tell you what, let's jump outside and I'll give you a look because I bet you are dying to see what it looks like. So there you have it. There is my setup. Let me know what you think. What does it look like? I think it looks absolutely brilliant. You know, you see what I mean? You've got a bit of gap here. You have a little gap here which allows for suspension travel. It is exactly the same front and back, which is really, really unusual when you're using springs because obviously it could be heavier at the back, they may be stronger at the front, and it never quite gets a balance. That's why a lot of people opt for the coilovers. But because the H&R is a high-end brand, they are perfectly suited. I mean, we're parking on pretty much level ground, albeit a little bit loose, <laughs> but it looks great now. I will quite happily take the hit because I did say that I did not like black wheels. And whilst I stand by the fact that when they're black and they get dusty, they look dirty like that, they look perfect. The red and the black is a solid combo, especially because obviously with the V6, you have the black spoiler extension, you have the black trims, which is the same on all of them. Um, the front grille's honeycomb black, everything, is made to be red and black, solid combo. Um, there's not too much black. Like I said, these wheels are lightweight. Um, the center cap actually spins out and then the nuts are behind. I've got these on 15 mil front, 20 mil rear spaces like I would normally run with any other 18 inch wheels. They fit perfectly, they look perfect. I mean, let me know what you think. Do you like them or do you hate them? Do you prefer the two piece bronze BBSs that I had before? Um, but I absolutely love it. The stance is great. The handling is brilliant. And for a V6, 
I'm starting to get used to it. <laughs> like I said, I wanted something that was both usable and looked good um, without being too harsh because I want to be able to chew the miles. I don't want to go on a road trip to say the ring or um, to Scotland knowing I'm going to be doing 1500 miles knowing it's going to be like that all the way there and all the way back. So this is this nice compromise between performance and comfort. I think if you're looking for, especially with a daily use, if, unless you're going to be doing track days, coilovers are pretty much useless. They're great, don't get me wrong, I'm not, I'm not crapping on them because I have a set, um, but coilovers are more designed for performance over comfort and daily use with our English roads. Okay, so I want to hear from you guys what you think of my new setup. Do you love it or do you hate it? I mean, the black wheels, they're going to take some getting used to and I'm going to have to clean them pretty much daily. I've got an extra litre of tyre shine because those tyres have got to stay black because otherwise they look brown as the wheels look black and, and dusty. But I mean, handling wise and the reason why I did what I did, I could not be happier. It is the perfect compromise between performance and comfort. It's got everything you'd want. It's got better feeling on the steering. It has better turning. It's just overall, it suits the car. This is what it should have had from the factory. I'm sure when it was newer, it would have been a lot better, but obviously 20 odd years old, it's tired. The likelihood is if your car still has its original shock absorbers, they will be on their way out if they're not already. Um, so if you are looking to do an upgrade, there is things in between this. I mean, you can, if you wanted to fit, say Bill Stein B4, um, shock absorbers or new KYB shock absorbers, whatever you wanted, new, normal standard ones, you could fit the H&R springs, but the longevity of the shock absorbers would be a lot shorter. It doesn't particularly matter, but if you want to get the best from it, that is the way to go the way I have. Um, like I said, this is only information I just wanted to show you and share with you guys what I have. Of course, I'm outside and it is noisy, so I will wrap it up for now, but let me know what you think and I will see you on the next one. Bye for now.